There is no need to introduce the James Webb Space Telescope at this time. Currently, it is the focus of space exploration. Since Webb's trip into space a few months ago, it has provided us with some breathtaking pictures and videos. So our notion of surprise in astronomy photos is likely to change a little bit when we have such a strong lens aimed at the deepest parts of the universe. When NASA's James Webb Space Telescope uncovers yet another magnificent old aspect of the cosmos, it is actually no longer surprising. At this point, we have very high standards for the trailblazing machine, and we anticipate nothing less. Instead, it now evokes more of a Webb has done it again sensation when the telescope returns a stunning cosmic image. But every single time, our jaws really do drop, and it has occurred once more. Webb is back at it, this time to a quite dramatic degree. Webb's spectacular image of a galaxy cluster merging around a huge black hole that contains a unique quasar was shown by astronomers last week. Yes, you heard correctly. A blindingly bright jet of light was shooting out of the chaotic center of the nothingness. There's a lot going on here, and the researchers who made the discovery think it might get worse. What are the jaw-dropping vistas that the JWST has captured then? How did JWST capture this enormous structure that is housed in a quasar trio? You'll get to know this and plenty more as we dive into the details of today's show. However, before getting started with the video officially, here's a quick reminder that you can subscribe for free and like the video so that we can boost the algorithm. Comments are most welcomed. We don't know enough about physics to describe the early universe. The ability for the JWST to gaze back in time and witness the universe at its beginning is one of the most fascinating possibilities. Since it takes billions of years for light from far off galaxies to reach us, we observe them as they were billions of years ago. However, the JWST's extraordinary sensitivity and resolution allow us to see these galaxies in great detail, allowing us to comprehend how they arose and changed through time. Observing the first galaxies to form after the Big Bang is one of the most crucial ways the JWST can help us comprehend the early history of the universe. It is thought that the universe's first few hundred million years was when these extremely distant and dim galaxies are thought to have formed. These galaxies emit a faint light that the JWST can detect thanks to its infrared capabilities due to the redshift brought on by the universe's expansion. We can learn more about the conditions that lead to these early galaxies' formation as well as the early evolution of the cosmos by studying these galaxies. The JWST is able to further our understanding of the early universe by observing the formation of the earliest stars. It is thought that these stars formed within the first few hundred million years after the Big Bang and were very different from the stars we see now. A breathtaking view of Uranus, taken by the James Webb Space Telescope JWST, reveals the ice giant's rings brightest moons and dynamic atmosphere in stunning detail. The most recent discovery, which came after the magnificent photo of Neptune, the second ice giant in the solar system, taken by the JWST on February the 6th, was made. Eleven of Uranus's 13 recognized rings are visible in the most recent image of the planet, some of which are so bright that they significantly overlap. The fact that the near-infrared camera, NERCAM, on the JWST is sensitive enough to have captured the innermost two of Uranus's hazy rings will truly surprise astronomers. Only the Voyager 2 spacecraft, which visited Uranus in 1986, and more recently, the state-of-the-art adaptive optics at the Keck Observatory, were able to obtain a glimpse of these faint rings. Voyager 2's photographs of Uranus during its 1986 flyby merely revealed a lifeless blue rock devoid of any distinguishing characteristics. A dramatic contrast is provided by the most recent JWST image, which depicts a dynamic and altering globe. The blue hue and orange highlights of the JWST image were created by merging the results of two filters. The representative colour image shows Uranus as a pale blue snowball encircled by a viscous icy fluid composed of water, methane and ammonia. With its orbit inclined at around a 90 degree inclination to that of the Sun, the ice giant Uranus turns on its side within the solar system. This tilt causes Uranus to have harsh seasons with vast lengths of uninterrupted darkness followed by an equal span of sunlight at each pole. It is now spring in Uranus's northern pole. This is depicted by in the image by the brightening of the ice cap on the ice giant's right side, which is facing the sun. Science has never before observed this aspect of the polar cap, which could not be seen in even Keck's most high-tech images. The edge of the polar cap is covered by a bright cloud with some fainter extending features. 
At Uranus's left limb, there is a second extraordinarily luminous cloud. Members of the JWST team claim that clouds like these can be seen at infrared wavelengths and are typical for Uranus. They are believed to be connected to storm activity over the ice giant. The summer season will start at Uranus's northern pole in 2028. Six of Uranus's 27 known moons were visible in the photos of the ice giant taken by JWST. This moon is the brightest of them all. The others are too dim to be seen in a very brief 12-minute exposure. The ice monster will continue to be seen by the powerful telescope in space. The extended research should be able to discern two, even more, weak outer dust rings that the Hubble Space Telescope discovered in 2007. This is according to members of the project team. In research regarding the image, co-author Andre Vayner of Johns Hopkins University stated, We think something dramatic is about to happen in these systems. The quasar in this image is thought to be an extremely red quasar, meaning it is exceedingly remote from Earth and so physically rooted in a prehistoric region of space close to the beginning of time. This makes the image particularly fascinating. The picture may appear to the inexperienced eye to be made up of colour patches. But to the skilled eye, everything about the image is intricate, captivating and fantastic. Its monster black hole at its centre only serves to highlight how groundbreaking this finding is. Let's break down the image in order to comprehend it and the grandeur of what we are seeing. First, we have a quasar that is really red. A compact area with a supermassive black hole at its centre is referred to as a quasar, a unique kind of active galactic nucleus, AGN. A quasar is so bright that it outshines all the stars in the galaxy put together due to gas falling into a supermassive black hole. Not only is it naturally red, but the light from the galaxy has been redshifted due to its great distance, making it unusually red. One of the most potent galactic nuclei ever observed at such a great distance is this quasar. Scientists had hypothesized that the quasar's intense emission might produce a galactic wind, which would force free gas out of its host galaxy and perhaps have a significant impact on future star formation there. The team was able to confirm three galactic partners to this quasar and demonstrate how they are connected using the images from NERSPEC. Herbal archive data suggests that there might be much more. The fact that the three verified galaxies are orbiting one another at such high speeds suggests that a significant amount of matter is there. The team thinks this is one of the densest known regions of galaxy formation in the early cosmos because of how densely they are clustered in the area surrounding this quasar. We might be observing an area where two enormous dark matter halos are fusing together. In essence, Webb has discovered a startling cosmic knot in the early universe with the help of this photograph. Another galaxy merger is taking place right now as we are talking about them. A merger unmatched by any other intergalactic union of the Milky Way and Andromeda galaxies. The Milky Way's nearest spiral galaxy is the Andromeda galaxy. It can be seen in the dark skies as a hazy patch of light, and only when one is actively looking for it. The Milky Way and Andromeda will clash as they dance through the cosmos. The Andromeda galaxy is already in transit and moving at a pace of 113 kilometers per second towards the Milky Way. Given that the two galaxies are two and a half million light years apart, a collision is most likely to happen five billion years from now. This information has also been corroborated by fresh study on Project Amiga, absorption maps of ionized gas in Andromeda, which made use of the Hubble Space Telescope. This has been dubbed the most thorough investigation of a galaxy's halo by NASA. This is due to the fact that all galaxies are surrounded by galactic halos that are made up of gas, dust and stray stars that are difficult to see and therefore difficult to study. However, by calculating how much light the Andromeda galaxy absorbed from the background quasars, these researchers were able to calculate its size. They were surprised to discover that Andromeda's halo extends far beyond its apparent borders. In fact, they found that it travels up to half as far as our Milky Way. That is 1.3 million light years away, and in some directions, it might be as far as 2 million light years. Astronomers think that the Milky Way's halo would be quite similar to that of the Andromeda galaxy, despite the difficulty they are having measuring its properties. Consequently, they came to the conclusion that the weak halos of the galaxies have begun to brush one another, inexorably igniting the route towards a collision. The Milky Way and Andromeda galaxies will really combine to form a single elliptical or football-shaped galaxy, according to a number of studies, rather than just avoiding one another as most cosmic collisions do. These two galaxies won't be the only ones participating in the game though. 
the Triangulum Galaxy, a massive galaxy in the local group of galaxies, or our nearby galaxies at a rough distance of roughly 5 million light years from Earth, will also participate. Even if the Triangulum might not take part in the actual merger, it could nevertheless collide with the Milky Way at some time. Galaxies are constantly crashing into one another in the universe. When galaxies collide, they frequently just pass one another, like two ghosts in the night. This is the case because collisions between stars within galaxies are practically unthinkable. But there will be repercussions if Andromeda and the Milky Way collide. The Sun is expected to be flung into a brand new area of our galaxy. What a magnificent sight to behold! Even if none of us will be around to see the cosmic dance, aren't we also kind of relieved? Do let us know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up. It will help us to understand our audience and allows YouTube to suggest similar videos to you. Thanks for watching. We hope to see you at the next one.